So here I am on the top of the bridge here, looking straight down the track, waiting for the Hogwarts Express to return. It's a beautiful opposite view. It really is a stunning railway. Seriously, look how beautiful this place is. Just gorgeous. Get the opposite view. Having a corker of a day here at Gothland. We are now on, obviously, you know, we're on the railway station and we are getting the train to where are we get the train to, Hazel? Pickering and then on to Whitby. And then all the way back. And then, the then all the way back past here to Whitby yeah. and then back here from, Whit, from Pit, Whitby to here. That's right. I knew I'd get it right at some point. I'm, Hazel's like my training wheels. She makes sure that everything that comes out of my mouth is vetted and, and, and is suitable for, for film film work, if you like. So, um, so yeah, so we're having a cork. Are we having a good day? What have you got in your hand? Show me. You stink of oranges. You've cracked into that lunch, haven't you? No. She's got a train lunch there. We cannot steam train. Steam train. Steam train. I love steam train. We love steam trains. Uh, you probably know I love steam trains. Anyway, I love lots of things, but steam trains I love. They're great. What have you got there? What have you got? Hang on. Show me. I don't believe you. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Very good. Actually, while we were waiting for a train, I thought we'd like to tell you a story. I only forgot about it. I thought about it last night, and then it went out of my mind. But we're talking about Hogwarts and uh, Harry Potter. Um, when I used to do the uh, animal education, the animal talks, I used to do parties for children as well with various animals. And there was one kid, it was a friend of mine, and he said that his friend had a child who was Harry Potter mad and they wanted to give him a Harry Potter birthday, or Harry Potter themed birthday. So his mum wanted to do something with mag magical and fabulous creatures. And of course, I had magical and fabulous creatures. And also, at the time, I had long, longer hair, which sort of went down way below my shoulders. And I also had, um, I had a beard. And so I had to put a big coat on, and I had to play the part of Hagrid for his party <laughs> so I actually played Hagrid for this kid's party and another thing as well that um, when they were doing the um, premieres of the Harry Potter films they used to have a couple of lookalikes that were that were that they were going to local cinemas and opening them up and there was one kid there who was uh, who was a Harry Potter lookalike an official Harry Potter lookalike he was employed by the um, by Warner Brothers or whoever it was and I used to have to go with him in a car and I used to have a snowy owl and I used to carry the snowy owl and he'd get out of the car and then I'd get out of the car and um, yeah, we used to, I used to stand there while he opened up the cinemas so many, many, we did some funny things as zookeepers but the uh, Hagrid one was probably the most memorable it was the funniest one anyway because I had to set lessons for the children which was quite good uh, Do you remember that Hazel? Yes Yeah, you remember, you, what do you remember of it? But, um... Where are you? Where are oh, you we there? We had that whip scorpion, didn't we? It was in Harry Potter. Yes, we had a whip scorpion. Oh, we had a tarantula as well that was in Harry Potter, didn't we? No, I think we just had the whip No, we did. We had a tarantula that was in Harry Potter as well. Apparently, it was one of the tarantulas in Harry Potter. Because a friend of mine used to supply the animals to the TV company Although for filming. He might have sold many, many whip scorpions to people and said that they were one that was in Harry Potter. It does sound scorpions. like something my friend would do, to be honest. But no, it, I'm sure it was because he was always honest with me. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we used whip scorpions. We used tarantulas, scorpions, uh, owls, we had a ferret as well, um, we didn't have a rat at the time, otherwise we could have had scabbards, no, we scabbers I think it was, stuff, we, we took lizards oh, and snakes and all sorts yeah, of weird them. and wonderful creatures and uh, yeah the kids thoroughly enjoyed it, so just happy memories. We, we have did a have a skunk, yeah, I had yeah. four skunks, but and Nate, no, no more. I knew that was going to happen, Willow's not my blinking tea over again. Oh, right, I'll speak to you in a minute guys, I'm going to dry myself off. Got diesel coming up here. That's the diesel, right? Look at the crap it's chugging out. I'm off of it. This is ours, isn't it? Well, how disappointing. That was hoping for a steam train, but it turns out to be blinking diesel. Thank you, Hazel. It's all right, we'll get a steam train later, hopefully. It's still pretty cold.
Okay, on the train. Let's go this side. Diesel. Let's have a look. Hang on. Okay. Well, like this seat goes down the way. Right, do you want to sit by the window, Fox? Yeah. I want to sit by the window. I want to sit by the window. You're grown up, you can look over I want to sit by the window. Let me sit by the window. Let me sit by the window. Mm. No. Well, we get all the best seats. Because he's the youngest. So, just been talking to the lucky dear, the conductress on the train, because it's all run by volunteers, this railway. And she was saying that there's a problem with the end. Con I said conductor. You said conductress. Stop picking me up. I'm liable to fly over there and tell you off. Ticket inspector, there you go. Good, good. The ladies proved us both wrong. So, ticket inspector, so there you are. So, um, TTI, there you go. TTI, not, <laughs> not, t not TTFN. TT oh, there's a the steam there, look. There you go. Oh, I see. But yeah, no, there's a stream tone running the other way, but the one that we were expecting apparently has had a problem. It's got a problem with an injector, so it's been towed away, sadly. But, um,. I'm happy just being on a train, to be honest with you. Although, you know, being on a steam train would be very cool. We might still get on one later. But these things happen, so never mind. We're going to make the most of it. And as I say, it's a train at the end of the day, so I'm very, very happy. All right, as the truth, I'm really peed off that I can't get on a steam train. I'm so wound up about it. Especially? Especially as we paid to go on a bloody steam train. And next to us is a steam train. And next to us is a bloody steam train. Oh, I'm, oh, oh. All I want to do is go on a bloody steam train and Bloody steam train broke, never mind anyway. But it doesn't bother me. There you go, guys. You are up the train. Hello, you lot. Are you join the uh, pretend steam train? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good boy. The scenery's gorgeous, actually. I know I keep saying that, but. Well, it'd be nice if there's a bit of steam accompanying it, yeah. The only thing that's steaming is, is me, unfortunately. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful track. It's still vintage. Going, we're going to Pickering and then getting the train on to Whitby. Back to Whitby. Back, back to Whitby. Back to Whitby. Yes, because we've got to go past it. All good fun, you know. So actually, it'll be this train going all the way back to Whitby. Yes. Yeah. Don't even, don't even, don't even, don't even start me. <laughs> Selling the magic frogs and stuff, the chocolate frogs and stuff. I just hope there's no dementors on this train by the time we get there. I'm a bit worried about dementors. Are you a bit worried about dementors? I am. I'm a bit nervous. Bloody dementors. <laughs> Right guys, we've got a big change of plan going on here with the Winters family. 
Um, due to the fact that they've had the breakdown with the steam train and this train's running late and there's been a lot of umming and ahhing and buggering about, what we've decided to do, because it's all out of it's all out of kilter, we've decided to get this train all the way to Pickering, scrub around the idea of going to Whitby because it's just going to be a nightmare, you don't know what time you're going to get there, you don't know what time the train's going to be running to come back because even the people that are running the trains aren't that sure at the minute, it's all up in the air. So what we've decided to do is go back, go to Pickering, take the same train back to Gotheland, um, let the kids burn off a bit of uh, diesel as Hazel said rather than steam and um, let them get them going to playground there for an hour or so. Meanwhile we can sit in the tea shop and have a nice cup of tea and a bun and um, and then make our way back to York and uh, just uh, have a few hours in York this afternoon and this evening. So, you know, it seems that it's a happy compromise. So I'm happy with that. Hazel's happy with that. I'm not sure the kids are. Well, Willow, I'm not sure is. Fox doesn't really know what's going on. Um, so that's what we're going to go with. Another thing I was going to say to you, I don't know if I mentioned it um, in yesterday or today's the vlog that I put up today, which was filmed yesterday. Those of you that are eagle-eyed will notice that when I was filming in the Minster, that there was limited filming from, I didn't go all the way in, and there's a very good reason for that. And the reason is that they were charging 11 pounds entrance per adult. And then if you wanted to go up the top, they wanted another five quid. So they wanted it was 16 pounds an adult. Now, I'm not averse to paying money to go in and see some wonderful and beautiful things, absolutely not. But I draw, draw the line, and I do draw the line when it's the house of God and it's meant to be free entrance for all and they stick a ticket price on it. But the interesting thing is that I met a lady, a, lady, a York lady, and I was talking to her in the market and she was, she was uh, telling me that, did you notice the scaffolding up the side? And I said, no, I didn't notice any scaffolding. She said, well, have a look, there's some scaffolding up the side. And she's right, there is scaffolding up the side. And apparently, when the scaffolding is not up, then the church are responsible for the building, for the minster. So they don't, they can't charge you to go into it because it's under church rules, under church regulations. However, when it's got the scaffolding up, that means that it's having repairs that the author local council or whatever's paid for. And so then it goes under local authority rule. And because it's under council rule, they can charge you. Now, another interesting point is she said to me, did you notice any work being done there? And I said, well, no, I didn't. She went, that's because there's not any work done there. The scaffolding is put up purely and simply as um, a loophole so that they can charge you for entrance to the minster. So that's what she was telling me. And it, it sounds, to be honest, it sounds about credible, doesn't it, for local authorities. So I'm going to go with that. And if that's what they're doing, they ought to be ashamed of themselves. Um, both local authorities and the church because it's just, it's not on. <coughs> when you've got to pay a load of money to get in to see your own heritage and culture, but not only your own heritage and culture, but, you know, a part of the religion of the country, and it's a church. So, not on at all. Anyway, speak to you a little later, guys. Cheers. This is more like it. We're in a first-class carriage. Look, with lockable door and everything. We've actually locked it to stop Hazel from getting in. Not really. She's gone to collect a coat, which she left. Oh. Absent-mindedly in the other carriage. So look, just to prove it, first class. Oh, yes indeed. I'm melting into these seats here. It's absolutely, oh, it's like a bed. It's wonderful. So I'm going to get my eyes shut, get my head down, and uh, do the hour trip back to Gothland. We're actually at Pickering now. And, um, yeah, going to do the hour trip back to Gothland with my eyes closed. Lead, leaded eyes and or leaded eyelids back to Gothland and just have a chill and a rest. And uh, unfortunately, we're on another blinking diesel because we haven't got any, we haven't got any steam trains running. Really? Because I've just seen three of them. Well, never mind. I'll, uh, I'll speak to you when we get there.
Speak to you soon, guys. So Hazel just noticed on the actual door of this carriage, this first class compartment, that if you want to ride this first class compartment, you have to pay four. I know you have to pay four pound extra. Well, they can just take a run and jump because I paid, or we paid, I think it was sixty-two quid for all of us as a family, uh, which is a big chunk of money. And um, we paid that for a steam train ride, and we haven't been on a steam train. So they can go whistle for their eight quid or 12 quid or whatever it is. They can do one. They're not going to get it out of me. I can tell you that. I'll take it all back. This is a brilliant railway service. This, look what I've got. 40th anniversary ale. And it's a, it's a quite a nice drop. 4%, so it's not that bad. But yeah, it's quite a nice drop of ale. So all's good with the world. All's good with the railway now. Well, we're back in Gotland. We've done it our round trip. The saga of the four pound per person per first class carriage was settled. We explained that, you know, we didn't get to ride the steam train like we wanted. And we thought it was a bit much spending best part of a hundred quid to just ride, ride a train and not get what we wanted. A hundred quid being not, but it's probably worth well, about 80 quid, but it would have been, you know, three, what, best part of a hundred pounds anyway. So we said, no, we're not doing that. So basically, and they said, no, that's fair enough. You didn't get what you wanted, so yeah, you don't have to pay it. Not that I was going to pay it anyway, to be honest. Right, with hi you. guys. So, well, I promise you, I'll take you to this place. So I'm going to take you to it now. Um, I think I've mentioned it a couple of times. So let's go and see it, shall we? Right, guys. Ever so sorry that it's a bit dark and shady here, but what we have here is the final resting place of the well-known notorious highwayman Dick Turpin. This is where he lies. As I said before, he was hanged at the race course at York Races. Obviously, it wasn't a race course at the time, but that's where they used to. Uh, that's where they used to have the um, the tire burn at the time, or their tire burn, and he was hanged there. And this guy actually comes from a village or a town now, not that far from us. He comes from a town, probably about three four miles from where I come from and that is Waltham Abbey in Essex so this is the final resting place of Dick Turpin the notorious highwayman and all that stuff about Black Bess being his horse just wasn't true that was just a, a interpretation and artistic license by a writer of the times now the thing about Dick Turpin is he was caught here I think I told you before he was actually captured here in York because he escaped the law in Waltham Abbey. Things were getting hot, they were hotting up. Made his way to York, took on pseudonym, and um, he fell out with a local pub landlord, and um, he shot the landlord's chicken. And rumour has it that the, head time, the headlines at the time was, Big Dick shoots landlord's cock. I don't think it was that, but I just couldn't resist it. I'm ever so sorry. But yeah, but he killed the uh, chicken of the landlord. He was uh, captured, taken to a prison. I think he sent a letter to somebody in the town where he came from, Waltham Abbey, and it was his teacher who recognised his handwriting. And I think that's what, that's what culminated in him being caught and him being recognised as Richard Turpin or Dick Turpin, the infamous highwayman. So there he lies, Richard or Dick Turpin, Stand and deliver the notorious highwayman hanged at York races or York race course, what was or what is now. So, there you go. Promise you I'll bring you to his grave, and I have. And it's pretty dusk now, it's getting dark, it's pretty moody, and I'm sure that most of you guys, most of the English British people, would have heard of him. I'll be surprised if anybody in Britain hasn't. And maybe you've heard of him abroad as well. So there you go. Cheers, guys. Speak to you later. I don't know if you can see that, guys. I don't know if you can see that. But this is um, in the cemetery where Dick Turpin's laid. And it says, Dick Turpin, much romanticised through legend, was in fact an infamous highwayman, murderer and convicted horse thief. He was tried and executed in York, assuring his place in English history and being forever linked with the city. I was, oh, was born in Hempstead in Essex, so he was born literally around the corner from Waltham Abbey, but he had a butcher's in Waltham Abbey, I know this, and uh, they wondered why he was getting a ready supply of meat, the local farmers, 
and then they worked out why because he was actually rustling the cattle killing them and then serving them out of his own shop and um, the story has it that they tried to break into his shop to get to him and he barricaded the front of the shop and made a quick exit through the back so there you go thanks guys right hi you guys i'm just doing a little bit extra this is our last day in york and the one thing that i didn't really cover was the river so we're going to be doing a river cruise along the kids are downstairs with hazel they didn't want to be blown away upstairs so i've just come down here by, up here by myself so i'm going to give you a little bit of a few views of the river um this it, it's just stunning you'll see it you'll be able to see the uh let's see york from the river from a river perspective and vantage so yeah just a little bit extra i'm adding on so i'll speak to you soon when we get going i'll start videoing cheers Now at a great central tower, now at a great central tower stand an astonishing 213 feet, which makes it the tallest building in York. Now if you wish they can climb to the top, it's too short from the top of that brick wall, so it's a very lucky escape for the houses over there. Now just ahead of us, going back, back underneath, is the Scarborough Railway Bridge. Now Scarborough Bridge has completed an 1844 to connect York to the sunny seaside town of Scarborough. It was designed by Robert Stevenson, the son of George Stevenson of Stevenson's rocket fame. Now in 1844, no, the bridge is always slightly different to this one, however very similar. The difference was the wall first placed in the Now the bridge is also placed on a line of medieval walls on its northwest side of York. As you get to the bridge, you can still see a section of the walls on the right hand bank. While you're looking over to your right and bank, that small round stone tower just before the bridge was once home to a man called John Lehman. Now John Lehman was a fairman. And these were people across the U's Chris Mullen B. But what Mr. Lehman needed was a bridge popping up his door. Now when a bridge finally got built and finally opened, he was effectively out of work. But it's very generous retreat by the city corporation of redundancy men of 15 pounds in a box of cards to compensate the loss of his livelihood. Now Mr. Lehman now must have been a shrewd businessman as he sold the horse and car for £25 the following week. And after he left his old boatyard. Now there's been a boatyard here since the 1840s. Oh well some of the buildings do date back a little bit older. And as you can imagine boat trips were very different in those days as it started off a couple of steamers and rope was for hire. Our boatyard though runs alongside the impressive 15th century Yorkstone building of the Guild Hall. Now the Guild Hall remained in use until 1942, but it had the damage during the World War. Now if you look at the local hall windows at the first half of the building, you'll be able to notice those black scorch marks surrounding the window frames. Now these scorch marks were caused by the incendiary bombs dropped during that World War. Now since that time that has been sought its almost original condition and it was home last year to the city of York's council chambers. But unfortunately that building's crowd had gathered on the bridge to welcome the Archbishop William to York. Now as more and more people gathered, it caused the bridge to collapse. Sending many of the people into the water, who were hit by a falling stone. Now looking if there's no serious injuries or deaths that day, as it was said to be a milk performed by the Archbishop William. Here, and this is known as the King's Act. 
It is often known as a pub that floods. The only reason it's often known as a pub that floods is when the water is high enough to break its banks. That is the first building in York to be badly affected. But the landlord just tries hardest to keep it open for as long as possible, as he has been known to hold a few canoe parties there. Now if you do fancy popping there though and in water is high enough on a crew or kayak, it is still perfectly safe to do so. As the landlord has come up with a brilliant idea, simple, yet very effective at keeping the beer in a beer attic as opposed to a beer cellar. Now the end of what I said if we know it used to be the border bridge, but away from balconies, this is the bonding warehouse. And the bonding arts, the raining building which kept the name as a warehouse and the days of the lords. That's not the warehouse, they're just some very nice houses. It was completed in 1875 and it is a place where goods were held and to whatever taxes and duties were paid. Now since that time it's enjoyed a second life as a bar, a music venue and a restaurant. Now unfortunately it's closed down during floods in 2000 which caused a lot of damage to our property. But it's recently opened in the past few years in 2014 and it's time converted into offices and apartments. Now I may say they're very nice Fox. apartments too, as one of recent sold for a million pound. York's first Fox ever million pound apartment. 